Okay, so a nice little short video just to talk about how you could go ahead and recreate the draw node, which is currently missing in version 1.3. So in 1.3, um, there are a bunch of new nodes and some things have been changed. So for example, the mask has been moved up here instead of all the way down here where you would have it normally. And that means that it is now available as a primitive node, so basically a generation node, which ultimately it kind of was, but um, uh, it just means that it doesn't have like a secondary uh, input over here. Now it works the same as usual. We have our power, which controls the blur, and then we have the edit mask, which puts us into a paint mode where we can choose the brush size and so on. Um, in my particular case, I just went ahead and it's still, uh, again, this is bleeding edge software. So this is like not the most current, uh, are not the, uh, the production ready version. So it's prone to bugs, there's prone to changes, various other things will happen. So when you bring in the mask, it still remembers its previous existence in its past life as a mask node. And so therefore defaults to mask. And so I just switched it back to default right here, which as a green node means it should show up as height. And uh, you'll notice that when I paint on it, it also put some red stuff here. Now this doesn't really matter because it's not gonna export that particular color information, but it's just kind of an interesting side effect. Now, when uh, we look at nodes inside of Gaia, Gaia often will create um, the, what well, they're calling them primitives because it's sort of like an analogy to the 3D primitive inside of other software where you have something that makes, you know, a torus, AKA the donut or uh, a geodesic sphere or, you know, those kind of things. And those are bits of, of code that arrange polygons in a very specific way, uh, uh, organization to give you the result that you want. Um, these are essentially, you know, mixing of different kinds of fractal properties in order to give you what you want as well in a lot of cases. So the draw node was essentially a mask node, just like the uh, island node, which is right here, is also the draw node. And then uh, the difference between the island versus the um, um, draw node itself was that the island node is just a mask and displace and it's just kind of cut to the edge. So it's always like sharp shaped, sharp edged. Whereas the draw node was still soft in the uh, in terms of the mask, and then the displace is added, and then a Voronoi is kind of revealed through. So that's what we do to reproduce it. So we've got our mask here. I come into a displace, and my displace, I've got it set to rugged. I've also changed the scale of the noise in order to get a little bit more out of it. And then in this particular case, because I wanted the uh, the height from this to come down, I just did it here. I went ahead and set it to clamp. I've got my drop to floor to make sure that it's flat and then just brought down that uh, clamp max and that will give me my maximum height to my mountain. So I have that control. So if I want them taller or shorter, I just change that value. And then last, we just plug it directly into the mask reveal of a Voronoi and we get our, our little mountains. And so all I've done here is I just took the scale to max. I haven't changed anything else currently. Now, in order to use this, like the draw node, right? And you know, when, we, when we did these things, we went into draw node and we saw it pop automatically. Well, that's pretty straightforward. I can right click, we can say, um, where it is pin, right? So an F on your keyboard, you pin that and you come into your mask and it stays on the Voronoi. And we can go ahead and say, edit mask and then paint something and you will see it update. You can leave that and that's, that's it. That's all there is, right? So it doesn't require a lot of, uh, major experimentation to try and make this work. It's, it's a nice, simple node. Um, so if I just unfocus that, there we go. So the, the key reason why we're doing the displace is really about the edges. So when um, you're working with um, something that's got like a blurred edge there, it does two things. Let's just connect it to the Voronoi directly so that we can see what it does. So if we took that Voronoi and maybe I'll just add the clamp to this one to floor. So we still got the, uh, 
the lowered sizes there. But look what happens. You see how very soft that edge? The, the edge is, um, it's also losing detail and the, the very ridge of it is very smooth and round. So the display is coming in there is really about making sure, and let's get rid of that, making sure that the edges have more detail and that we don't lose detail as it gets to that lower region. So we get something out of it. And then from there, you can go ahead and erode it and do whatever you want with it. But that's, that's it, essentially. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can you know, recreate, recreate stuff when, when you lose things. And uh, we can also use it as insight into how some of these other things, some of these new ones are made. So like we took a uh, hill and mountain and uh, thought about how they're put together. You know that mountain has a radial gradient just like hill does, but hill is a nice soft one. Whereas mountain is a distorted radial gradient. And that also leads into some calculations in terms of, you know, how long it takes for them to process because, you know, a displacement, a high detailed displacement can be fairly expensive in terms of time. Um, another thing that we could look at with this is that if I were to use, where are we here? Uh, Shaper node. I'll either one of these because they're so similar. If I take the mountain, I go this direction, I get a hill. If I take the hill and I go this direction, I get a mountain. So it tells you that they're they're fairly similar in the overall way that they're they're handled. It's just about you know profiles and different ways of doing things. So the hill uh, comes with a built-in kind of erosion. It's being shaped by various different shapes kind of cutting into each other. You can see that in the ridge here. So the, uh, the radial gradient is trying to uh, exist around the edge and it happens to be smaller than say the eroded mound that is here. And then we have another shape that cuts it out. Whereas the mountain is uh, a distorted um, radial gradient, which now has this lovely edge option which if you find it's creeping over the border and you, wanna, you don't want to, it going right to the edge, you can bring that in, which is nice. And uh, it also has another option, which is bulky, which um, with its height option here, right? It's, uh, it's not enough to play with. So rather than doing like an auto levels to it, you can just hit bulky. It's built right in and it becomes much higher. And then you can use the height to control it a little bit more evenly. And so you can get a lot more uh, physical height off of it and more control over that height. And then these are just different patterns of Voronoi. So it'll look just slightly different. It's not a huge difference. So hill just comes in with more detail. Mountain is all about like the original base shape. And then again, like I said, we can use it in different ways. So um, if I want to control over the, uh, the width, of my little hill, right? I can do that. So there you go. There's a few of the nodes, the new nodes, and uh, some ways to like uh, recreate content in there, just based on you know simple analysis, uh, in Bleeding Edge version 1.3.